afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining me for, let's see, what do we call it today? Another, um, I always try to think of one of these uh, great adjectives that you could use on the fly. So another laudable session of OLC 4.0 Term 2B. So hopefully it's laudable. When something is laudable, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, worthy of praise, it's good, it's uh, something that should be talked about. So um, hopefully I can live up to that adjective. So yeah, thanks for joining me for OLC 4.0 Term 2B. Today's uh, uh, brought to you by Wasa Distance Education Center. Now, my, my name is Mike Laverty. I'm the instructor for OLC 4.0 and today's date is uh, Tuesday, May the 23rd, 2023. We are on class number 21 of OLC 4.0 and we are working our way through um, Unit 3 now. So in our, in our last class um, that, that broadcast last Thursday, we, we, we did the first assignment in Unit 3. That's assignment 30. And so we're, we're moving along with that discussion of, of Unit 3. So there are, of course, four units in this course that you have to complete. And we are on number three. This is week number six of Term 2B. And just, you know, I like to give, give you reminders. It's a uh, nine-week nine week course. So you've got uh, you know nine weeks until until term two B is wrapped up. So that brings me to some very important deadlines. For any potential grads out there, your deadline for submitting work is June 9th, and that you know that includes scheduling your final exam. Other students have a deadline of June 16th, so less than a month away for submitting work in this course. So if you want to finish OLC 4.0 and you want to finish it this term, you got to make sure you get that work in before June 16th and arrange to have your final exam written. After that, if you can't make that June 16th deadline work, then you have to register for the summer course, uh, the summer term, and then you got to start your course all over again. So I don't want to see some of the students, and, uh, and there's a few of them uh, that I can think of that have, have started submitting work and you know are you know one unit in, two units in. So you want to just make sure you keep that deadline in mind reach out to someone here at Wasa right away. We can help uh, make a strategy, give you a plan, right, for, for moving forward, right, to, to get that credit. So, so yeah, we, we tackled Units 1, tackled Unit 2. Uh, today's uh, classes, sorry, this week's classes and next week's classes, we will be talking about Unit 3. Then we'll talk about Unit 4 in uh, Weeks 8 and 9. And then you know, we'll talk about the final exam preparation. So depending on how many classes we have left in the term, we'll devote at least, you know, one or two of them to to getting you ready for the final exam. And so, you know, it's good to do a little breakdown, right? So you, you've got your unit assignments. And those are going to be 70% of your final grade. Then you hand in a literacy portfolio, which is mostly just a collection of your previous assignments with a couple of new additions. And then you've got to write that final exam. And the final exam is worth 20% for a grand total of 100%. All right, so yeah. Thank you for tuning in. OLC does broadcast live on the airways from Monday to Thursday from 1 p.m. to 1.50 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can always phone the studio at 1-800-465-7144 or phone us at 1-807-737-4017 with any questions or comments. That's at 91.9 FM or on Bell Express View Channel 972. You can also watch my class and lots of other classes at WASA through the Zoom application. So if you just go to zoom.us or open up the Zoom app on your phone, ask to join a meeting, and you'll be asked to provide the meeting number or the meeting ID. Mine is 417-6699-799. Every teacher is going to have a unique uh, meeting ID that you can use to, to join their classes. 
And of course, I archive all of my videos on YouTube. So if you go to the playlist and just look up OLC40, you can you can find my 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 playlist and my and my OLC40 uh, videos there. So I did one in term 1B, and now I'm doing one in term 2B. And if, if you can't find a particular lesson or a video you're looking for, just send me a message, and I'll be sure to help you out and help you find it, okay? So you can do that by emailing me at mlaverty, M-L-A-V-E-R-T-Y at nnecschools.org. That's M-L-A-V-E-R-T-Y at nnecschools.org. Or simply find me on Facebook. Look for L A V E R T Y space W A H S A Laverty Wassa, uh, and then you can also phone the office here at one eight zero seven seven three seven one four eight eight. Enter extension two two one one to talk to me directly, or call us toll free at one eight hundred six six seven three seven zero three. And here's your suggested progress. So if you've been taking this course for, you know, five weeks, w as we are right now, you should have reached out to me, established communication with your teacher, have all of the assignments in Unit 1 wrapped up, most of the assignments in Unit 2 wrapped up. You should have read or skimmed through the Unit 3 handout and have the first six chapters of Jimmy Come Home read at this point. That's our novel. Because that deadline is coming fast. So here is a look at today's lesson. We will look at our words of the day. We'll look at a headline. And I've got four assignments on the board. I'm not sure if we can get to all four, but as always, um, I'll do my best, but I want to I wanna make sure that we, we, we devote an, uh, the proper amount of time to each one. And there's some very important concepts that I want to go over in today's class in, in a lot of detail. And... The concepts that I'm going to be talking about in today's class are, are foundational concepts to, to this chorus and you know to the, to the act of reading and writing in general, right? So, and this is a, this is a literacy chorus, and this is what it's all about. So, if you can understand the concepts that I'm talking about here, and you can talk about them, and you can apply them to, you know, other texts that you come across. Then you know you'll be you'll be ready to to write that final exam. So I'm just thinking ahead to that final exam and to you know some of the some of the larger assignments in this course. So that's that's what we're going to talk about today. So those four courses, and then more specifically, we're talking about how writers choose their subject, their audience, and their purpose. Right. So in their writing. Right. So so you know the subject basically is what you're writing about. The audience is who you are writing to, who you want to read it the most, and your purpose is is your why, right? So why are you writing it? What are you trying to get out of it? You know, what are you trying to um what are you trying to achieve with your writing? And so I want you to think about your su your subject, audience and purpose, and then I want you to think about the the subject, audience and purposes of other writers, right? So you're you're approaching these learning goals um as a reader and a writer. And I'd like you to take notes as we discuss various forms and styles of writing and the writing process, right? So we're going to talk about the writing process to help you generate your writing, to help you express yourself, and then and then help you understand other people's writing. Because that's, that's really what it's all about. And I, and I often use the example of being a musician, right? If, if you want to be a musician and you want to learn how to how to play music and learn different styles and just learn how to entertain people and just and and progress as as a as a as a musician then you have to listen to other people play you have to listen to other other records and you have to kind of like break them apart and then that in turn is going to make you a stronger uh guitar player bass player uh you know uh, accordionist <laughs> whatever instrument you're 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 playing right so and the same goes for reading and writing. You know, I if you want to be a good writer, you you have to do a lot of reading, and you have to do like very focused and and determined reading, right? Like reading with a purpose, right? Um, uh, reading that that looks at specific subjects, right? So that so you are the audience, 
and you're also the writer, right? So you're a, you're a reader and a writer, and this chorus helps you become uh, better at both, better at reading, better at writing. Your success criteria for today's class is to complete assignments 32 and 33 using your understanding of the following, subject, audience, purpose, style, and tone, and to practice the writing process to complete assignments 31 and 34. So assignments 31 and 34 are journal entries, so we, we can practice the writing process to, to get those done. And assignments 32 and 33 are more specific exercises that are asking you to look at um, specific kinds of writing and then testing your understanding of, you know, who wrote these documents, why did they write them, how did they write them. All right, before we do the words of the day, I've got a couple of images on the screen. So if you're listening on the radio, then I'll do my best to describe them. So on the left, we've got a, a very famous phrase, don't miss the forest for the trees. Um, sometimes that's written as you can't, you can't see, you can't see the forest for the trees. And, you know, the, the trees are, are the details in, in our writing, right? And the forest I is, is, is the text, right? And so that that's why I brought that that phrase up. I think you know you have to be, you have to be, um, you have to observe, uh, observe the you know like the, the pieces that make up something. But you also have to look at it as as a whole thing, right? So, um, when when somebody writes a letter to the editor in a newspaper, right? You can break it down to the details, um, but you also have to look at it a as a whole document, right? So the forest in this metaphor is um, is the thing as a whole, as like a human being as a whole, and the trees are like the little details that make up, you know, a, a person, a song, um, a novel, right? So I think you have to see both, and you can't just focus on one. On on the right hand side, we've got a guy driving through the forest, and and the and it's it's a it's a it's it's a it's a cartoon, and it reads caution trees obscuring views of forest right so that's the kind of uh they're they're using that expression don't miss the forest um for the trees right so so we're just we're just gonna use that as a launching off point to to talk about our s discussion of subject audience and and purpose right so these are like in a sense they're kind of like the trees that make up a document, but they're not the whole thing, right? So you have to kind of, you have to have like a, a, a toolkit as a reader to, to understand something on, on many different levels, okay? And then sort of combine them, right? So, so combine your understanding of the trees to, to understand the forest. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense in my mind, but sometimes I think I, um, I might get a little bit too out there, but I, I definitely had fun putting that one together. Um, so I've got a couple of words on the board. Um, one of them is an Anishinaabe Moan word. Um, Oshki, Oshki Kigan, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, uh, a noun. Uh, something made, built, or formed. For example, a handmade thing, a manufactured thing, a product. Um, a, a, a related word or a word that I associate with that is, is design. Um, in this case, it's it's a noun, so not like to do something, but to um, the the design is the organization or structure of of formal elements in a work of art, a composition, right? So that's that's what like English really breaks down to, right? If if you want to be successful in an English course and you and you're asked to read something and to respond to it, and that's going to happen on the final exam, right? You're you're going to be given a document to read, and then after you read that document, then you're going to have to talk about it. And if you can break it down by its formal elements, its, its, its parts, its trees, right? So if you want to talk about the forest, um, you, you've got to talk about um, the different components that, that make it up, that, that form it, that, that make it built. A couple more words. We've got um, 
Mazani b e gun is a noun. Something drawn, a drawing, a sketch, a design. Ajitun verb uh, to make, to build, to form it. So, want you to really think about that, right? So, when when you're writing and you're creating your assignments, you you are building, and and, and you're and you're gathering together materials, right? You're gathering together words to make up sentences, combining those sentences to make up paragraphs, and when you look at the writing of other people, you have to recognize that they did the same thing, right? They gathered up their words and they gathered up their their sentences and their paragraphs and they made something. They constructed it, right? Um, maybe from a sketch or a drawing or a blueprint, right? But they, they made it, they built it, they, they formed it. Some English words that uh, came to mind when I was thinking about this. Uh, one is genre. It's a class or category of artistic endeavor, having a particular form, content, technique, etc. Comes from the, the word Latin for genus, which is uh, birth, family, or nation. So we can we can think about some genres of writing, like um, like there's romance, there is science fiction. We've got fantasy. Right, these are genres, right? You've got horror, comedy. So these are examples of uh, of genres, right? And th and that's important, right? To 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 know what kind of genre something fits in. And and most works of art are like that. They they don't just exist on their own as their own like unique thing, you know. As much as write, as much as writers and musicians and creative people want to think that everything they do is unique and awesome, it usually belongs to like a family of like other works, right? So you can you can kind of group it together with other things, and once you know the form and the convention of one, it can really help you understand um, another one. Structure is a noun. It's the relationship or organization of the component parts of a work of art or literature. So this is how the forest. Um, how how the trees become the forest, right? So, you know how 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 a, a work of art gets built up together, right? So how do the parts work together, right? So, and you know that that's kind of another, another uh, cool example, right? When when people uh, look at forests, the the scientists see that all of the trees kind of like work together, right? And, and the trees don't exist independently of each other. Their roots talk to each other. They send signals back and forth. You know, it's a forest is like you know a, a huge, you know, web of like interactions, right? And and the same goes for, you know, um, a piece of writing, a piece of literature, um, even just your journal entries, right? It's just um, the words all work together and kind of um, they come together as as a structure to to make something. Okay, that leads me to the article of the day. This one was from last fall when the country of Argentina won the World Cup. They won the World Cup. They, they beat the defending champion France in penalties. Lionel Messi of Argentina lifts the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 winner's trophy following the final match between Argentina and France at Lusail Stadium on December 18th, 2022. Sorry, it's last winter in Lusail City, Qatar. There's our headline, Argentina wins World Cup, beats defending champion France in penalties. Just a quick review um, of a headline, right? And, and again, I want to use that model of like, you know, um, how something is built, how something is constructed. So just, just a quick review for everybody out there. We should be really familiar with these concepts. So um, Argentina is the, is the subject they are the subject of our of our of our of our sentence. So Argentina, and then and then the predicate is what they did or what is said about them. So a complete sentence or a complete thought in the English language has a subject and and a predicate, right? The the sentence is about something, and then we learn something about that thing, right? What they did, what they want to do. In this case, they won the World Cup. So Argentina wins World Cup. That right there, um, that could be a complete sentence. That's that's a little nugget of wisdom. It's a, it's a little idea, right? So it, it's one tree in the forest, right? 
Uh, Argentina wins the World Cup. But we get more information. They beat defending champion France in penalties, right? So then we get some additional information, right? So, And this kind of goes back to our news report. You know, as writers, we are giving our readers the main idea. And then we're elaborating upon that main idea, right? So that that's th one thing that I've talked about over and over again in this chorus. You know, I want you to introduce ideas, um, give your readers, you know, uh, main ideas, and then back up those ideas with, like, lots of examples. You know, um, really specific, focused writing. You know, not, not talking about many, many things on the surface level, talking about a few deliberate things um, in, in our writing, you know, with, with many examples and many explanations that sort of uh, give the reader a full story, right? So that's the main idea of the article, right? So um, Argentina, World Cup, champion, France, penalties. These are things. These are my nouns. Um, win, beats. These are my verbs, my action words. Um, France is, is the defending champion, right? So they were the champions of last year, no, not any longer. And the word in is a preposition. It tells me where something happened. Prepositions tell us where things happen, when things happen. They tell us relationships between things. So we'll, ha we'll have a quick look at the article, see how it's, how it's written. Argentina won its third World Cup in extraordinary style on Sunday, comma. Beating France 4-2 in a penalty shootout after Lionel Messi scored twice in a 3-3 draw that featured a hat-trick for Kylian Mbappe as the holders recovered from 2-0 down after 80 minutes. Okay, we got the uh, ITS. That means something belongs to it. In this case, it's something that, something that belongs to Argentina. So, so again, you get that main idea. Argentina won its third World Cup. And then we get... Um, a further explanation on how they won the, the how they won that. So it's like, what happened, and how it happened. And that that's a typical order you see in news reports. And you know, you you tell the reader what happened, and then you tell them how it happened. And, and this speaks to, you know, the, what we're going to talk about in a bit, right, the, the, the purpose of a newspaper article, right? The purpose of a newspaper article is to give you information, right? And, you know, it's to, it's to give you information, and it's to give you information in a, um, in a very specific way. You know, if, if you read a lot of newspaper reports and you read a lot of newspaper articles, they do follow a very specific uh, format, and they are very similar Again, we have that inverted pyramid that we talked about in previous classes where the most important information comes at the start. And then as we read the article, we get less and less um, important information. The next part of the essay reads, It was an incredible night of drama and fluctuating fortunes, delivering one of the all-time great finals to cap a wonderful tournament. So that's, that's a really great uh, sentence. You could learn a lot from just breaking down one sentence and looking at its structure, right? So the first part of the sentence is, it was an incredible night of drama and fluctuating fortunes. Fluctuating fortunes, that's that double F sound. That's what we call alliteration. So alliteration is when you uh, combine lots of um, uh, consonant sounds at the start of your writing. Or uh, assonance is when you use lots of vowel sounds, but people usually use, use alliteration for both, right? Comma, uh, delivering one of the all-time great finals to cap a wonderful tournament. So that's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice piece of writing. Um, something, I and it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's written simply. Um, it's, it's got a couple of, uh, you know, $10 words like fluctuating and drama, but it's... Uh, got lots of adjectives, you know, uh, wonderful, fluctuating, incredible. So, you know, um, relevant details, pl 
plus, you know, adjectives. That's a good combo, right? It's a good combo for for most writing, right? If you can if you can think of relevant details, and and write about them using uh, powerful adjectives. Argentina had had looked to be cruising to a one-sided victory after Messi's penalty and a brilliant goal by Angel de Maria in the first half put them in total control. But Mbappe's converted and but Mbappe converted an 80th minute penalty and volleyed in an equalizer a minute later to take the game to extra time. So that's so there so we find out what happened, we find out how it happened, and then we get, you know, you know, even more specific details, right? And this is like, you know, uh, uh, one final point on that. It's like it's like when somebody tells you a story, right? Um you know, like, oh, did you hear what happened a at dinner last night? You know, um, you know, like Marcel fainted, right? And that's like, okay, wow, okay, so what happened there? And then you get more specific and more specific, or, oh, you know, last night at the hockey game, you know, two two of the hockey moms got into a fight, you know, and you're like, okay, that that's interesting. I want to hear about that. So you so you find you find out what happened, and then you find out you know how it happened, and and, it, and it's a it uses storytelling techniques and conventions. And that's what you're doing with your writing. You're, 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 you're telling a story. You're giving people information. Okay, uh, moving right along. Journal entry. It's a visual, so assignment 31. The last several lessons you have done in this course have focused on visuals. Use this opportunity to describe in a paragraph containing six or seven sentences what you think the use of visuals is all about and why we have spent some time on it. We know that they add to our understanding of material and also to make the material we are going through more interesting with some variety. In your paragraph, also include some examples of visuals used and where we often see them. Okay, so again, that's the specific criteria for that assignment. So I want you to read that criteria. Make sure you don't miss anything. Okay, so it's very important that you do that. So. So you've got to give some examples of of some visuals that that you've seen and used and and where we often see them, and then you've got to, you know, it's a paragraph, six to seven sentences on uh, on what you think the use of visuals is all about, okay. And so what I what I would suggest to you to do, you know, you want to get some specific details in your writing. And and what I would suggest doing is like to do a list, right? Um, so you've got photographs, and and we could think about like Facebook, online, you know, magazines. We could talk about uh, you know like graphs. Infographics. We could talk about, you know, emojis and symbols. We could talk about, um, you know, what other what other visual elements can we can we talk about? Okay, we got maps. So maybe you know, um, you know. So I, I've got that list, and I, I started with the specific details. I'm starting with the trees, right? Starting with the trees before before I build up my forest, and I'm just sort of wondering, like, how can I write about those specific details in in a journal entry, right? So that, th but that's first step would be to 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 just draft up a list of specific details and then to think about how you're you're going to write about them um, and then and then you might want to write something like um, like 
I, I might, and then I might just like write about the thing that um, appeals to me the most, right? So, so maybe um, I would think about photographs and like people posting uh, photographs, and you know, um, and then maybe you know, for my journal entry. I might write about, you know, like what what gets um, people's attention on Facebook. You know, and then you might think that like, um, you know, people... will share a photo and say something about it you know and the um the text and uh what am I saying here? The words and and visuals help each other. And so what I've just demonstrated there is like the first part of the writing process where you, you plan and you outline. That's step one. And then and then step two is is where you um you know, you do a bit of writing, either just like point form or just jotting things down. But that's that's the way that works for me, and I w I you know it might work for you. So that's just something you could look at, right? So just you know, giving yourself uh, giving yourself a starting point. And I would write about how you know how how a picture you post on Facebook, and then the words you post on Facebook to go with that picture. You know how those two things work together, and that might be something that I would talk about. You know, find an example. Um, um, and then, you know, you, you can, you can, you can often start your writing with a question like, you know, what gets people's attention on Facebook or, you know, um, that's a strategy that a lot of people use, um, in their writing. Um, and, and especially a journal entry, right? A journal entry is a, it's a time for you to reflect and to think about things, right? And sometimes you can pose a question and you don't know the answer to the question. You just sort of like pose it, you, you. You ask the question, and then you're kind of just surprised, uh, and, y and you see where the where the question ends up. All right, uh, unit two. Uh, sorry, that should be. Uh, I forgot to update my lesson. That's a lev lesson. I believe it's lesson twelve. Twelve or thirteen? I can't remember. Anyways, it's assignment thirty-two. Subject, audience, and purpose. A writer must ask himself or herself three questions before beginning to write. What is my subject? Who is my audience? And what is my purpose? So we're, we're going to spend the, the rest of today's class talking about these three things, okay? So what is my subject? Who is my audience? And what is my purpose? So the subject is the topic of the written work. And there are as many things to write about as there are people to write them, right? So there, there's there's you know seemingly infinite numbers of possibilities here. We could we can write about a lot of things. Once you decide on a subject, you have to narrow it down to make it manageable and less scary. The more specific the topic, the more precise the writing, and that is what you want. So again, I, I really want to focus on that, right? You want to be, you always want to be specific with your writing. Be specific. Focus on details, right? You know, don't just, you know, don't just write about, um, you know, like something in general. Don't, don't just, if, if you're writing a memoir of your life, you know what I mean? Um, you want to get as specific as possible, right? Um, de depending on how much you, you want to write too, right? And, that, and that's another consideration too, like how much are you writing? Are you writing a paragraph? Are you writing a page? Are you writing... Uh, you know, uh, 10 pages. If, if you're writing a page about a personal hero of yours, then you'll want to specifically get down to the most important things. 
if you've got 10 pages to write about that person, then you've got some wiggle room. But, um, but yeah, the subject is the topic of what we're talking about. And there are general subjects, and, they're, and they get progressively more specific as we kind of go down the... Uh, as we go down the list. So this is, uh, I'm, I'm a former librarian, and this is the, an example of the Dewey Decimal System. And I think it illustrates the point quite nicely. So if you go into a, a bookstore or a library, and you might see these numbers uh, printed on the, uh, the spine of the book, there might be a little sticker on the book, especially if you're in a smaller public library. And so, what they did is they gave a number to, to everything uh, in the universe, right? This system's like over 100 years old, so obviously there weren't computers and things when it came out, but they had to adapt. But in theory, everything gets a number. So uh, 796 is athletic and outdoor sports and games. And then 796.9 is winter sports. 796.96 is ice game in sports, and then and so on, and then ice hockey, and then 796.9622 is ice hockey theory instruction, right? So if you want a book about coaching hockey, you'll find it there. And if you want a book just about hockey in general, you'll find it um, in the category above, right? So you can, you can just get more and more specific with what you want to talk about, and that's going to make for, usually it's going to make for more interesting writing. So in part one of this assignment, you are to choose two of the general topics listed below. Create two specific subjects that someone could use for a paragraph for each one. You may also list a general topic of your own and then create a specific and then create specific subjects, right? So moose hunting, the example is how to clean a moose, right? Um, you know, powwows, you could talk about um, the history of powwows, the, you know, you know just that's that's an example, right? So um, again, you've seen my example for hockey, um, fishing, right? So just move from the general to the specific, right? So talk about something in you know as as like a, as as vaguely as you can possibly do, and then get more and more specific. Like you talk about Canada, well, Canada is made up of the east, west coast, and, and the far north, and and Ontario. Ontario is made up of, of the far north and southern Ontario and southeastern Ontario. Okay, northern Ontario. Well, you, you get more and more specific until you get down to, you know, my house on my block, right? So that one's, that one's pretty easy, right? So you just got to, you know, just take those, you know, um, create two specific subjects that someone could use for a paragraph for each one. Okay? Two specific subjects for each one. All right, your audience. This is the person or people who will read your writing. Thinking about your audience will help you figure out the content, what you write about, the language, the words you use, and the tone, how you write. When we speak, we naturally modify or change what we talk about and how we talk about it according to our partners in conversation, our audience, who we're talking to. So we can get the most out of what we're talking about and make everyone feel comfortable and included. Well, most of the time, anyway. Right? So... We often will change the, the, the way we talk and what we talk about depending on who's listening to us, right? Are they, are they children? Are they seniors? Are they police officers? Are they, um, are they co-workers? Are they friends? Are they wives, ex-wives, boyfriends, ex-boyfriends, right? Just, you know, how we talk and what we talk about is definitely changes upon who our audience is. Use your understanding of audience, to uh, this is part two, to give the message to these different people. You will write three sentences for this one. Uh, you don't feel well and you will not be attending class today. So how would you write that to, to myself? How would you write that to an aunt or an uncle? And how would you write that to your best friend? Okay? So just, just think about that, right? So you're going to write three different messages. And those messages are going to be different because the audience is different, right? And so just think about the way you talk to your teacher, the way you talk to your boss versus the way you talk to people in your family versus the way you talk to your friends, right? And usually it, it gets more informal and more playful and more honest, right, and less professional. 
you know, as, as we go down the list, right? You're going to be the most professional with your teacher, the least professional with your, um, with your, with your friends. And you'll probably tell your friends things you would never tell your teacher or your aunt and uncle and, you know, vice versa. All right. Purpose. Uh, what is our primary or most important purpose, right? So, so when we write, we have a purpose, right? And then uh, we have a primary purpose in mind, right? So when we when we persuade, you know, we we try to convince people to 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 you know you know we are trying to convince people we are right, or we know what we're talking about. Uh, to inform is simply to give information. And there's a big difference there, right, between just giving information and trying to put forth an opinion, right? You know, these. this is opinion, this is facts. Uh, and to entertain is to, our primary purpose is to make our readers, our audience, feel a certain way. I think there's like an emotional there's an emotional component to to entertainment, right? You're you're trying to make someone feel happy or sad or you know, uh something like that, okay? So in in the uh in in our in our assignment guidelines we have you have to identify the purpose of the following topic sentences that might appear at the beginning of various types of writing circle the purpose right so um if this is a topic sentence the best snowmobile on the planet is the arctic cat is the author trying to inform me give me information are they trying to persuade me convince me that they're right or they are they trying to entertain me make, make me feel a certain way uh jimmy went to school so that so that he could stay out of jail Again, is that I to inform, to persuade, or to entertain. And the final one is let me tell you about the time Gary and I stayed out all night and the fun we had. Is that to inform you, to persuade you, or to entertain you? All right, assignment 33, form, style, and tone. Uh, y so in, in your assignment guidelines, you have a following passage. And you are to read it and try to figure out what it is saying. You are then to answer the questions that follow. Wassa Distance, Wassa Distance Education Center is cognizant of the strengths, values, and traditions passed down through the generations of First Nations people. We have honored those who have walked ahead of us, have respect for those who walk with us, and consider those yet to come. Wassa Distance Education Center encompasses the traditional education process by blending culture, tradition, information, and technology. This philosophy provides opportunities to demonstrate our commitment to the values, needs, and learning styles of our communities. Our goal is to continue developing and implementing an education system that always takes into account the next generations. We will meet the needs of the present without compromising future generations and educate the people we serve so that they will succeed in the modern world. All right, so before we do that, I just wanted to have a, a quick look at, um, I'm trying to, trying to give you some hints here, so uh, pay attention. So many organizations, um, will will give their mission their vi their vision and their values okay so your mission is, is what y what do we do today who do you serve what are you trying to accomplish what impact do you want to achieve your vision is where are we going moving forward what do we want in the future what kind of future society do we envision and your values are you know what do we stand for what behaviors do we value over all else uh how will how the typo in there how will how will we conduct our activities to achieve our mission and vision how do we treat members of our own organization and community right so is i think what's happening in that document is it's either talking about the mission the vision or the values or all three of wasa so you can decide which one you think it is right here's an example from our region that so this is the sulacout first nations health authority their mission statement reads Sulakelet First Nations Health Authority, transforming the he health of Anishinaabe people across Kiwetanuk by providing community-led services and a strong voice for their community needs. Their values, 
At SLIFNA, we respect relationships, culture, equity, and fairness. We work to protect the Anishinaabe teachings of love, courage, respect, wisdom, truth, honesty, and humility. Their vision is resilient and health nations supported on their path to wellness. So let's just go back a few questions. So what is the form of this piece of writing? And I want you to think about what I just taught you just told you about, right? Um, so is it a song, a letter, a speech, or is it perhaps some kind of a, a statement of kinds? What is the style of this piece of writing? Is it formal? Is it informal? And, you know, again, so formal is when you're communicating to people um, and you're, tr you know, usually trying to impress them, trying to, um, you know, it, it's informal conversations are ones between equals or people that know each other. And formal communication is usually for people who don't know each other or for people who are trying to communicate with people they, they don't know. What is the tone of this piece of writing? Is it serious? Is it casual? So, you know, style um, style and tone are, are similar, um, but style sort of like dictates how the thing is organized. And, um, and the tone of the piece of writing is sort of like how it's written on a sentence by sentence level. So is it, and then, so formal and informal, why? Serious or casual, and why? So don't forget the why, okay? So a lot of students submit this assignment and they just say, oh, it's this, it's that, but they don't explain why. When the writer wrote this, what do you think his purpose, his or her purpose was? Okay, so what's the purpose of this piece of writing? Question five, who do you think is the intended audience for this piece of writing? Okay, so who do they want to read this? Um, do you think the form, style, and tone of this writing are appropriate to the audience you identified in question five? Explain your answer, right? So, um, yeah, that, that's actually a pretty deep question, right? So who do you think is the intended audience for this for this piece of writing? You know, and that, and that sort of like speaks to like um, who wrote it, um, why they wrote it, how they wrote it. You know, just think, like, who's going to read that thing? You know, why Why would they write that document in that way? And, you know, what were they trying to get out of it? What's their purpose? There are several words in this writing that you may not be familiar with, either because they are spelled incorrectly, used in a way you have not seen before, or are simply words that are not in, in your vocabulary. Choose five words that seem unusual or strange and try to find their meanings. Use any and every resource you can think of, including the context of what you have read, to discover the meaning of these unfamiliar words. So just pick five words and uh, and then tell me what their meaning is, right? All right, so like uh, um, cognizant, uh, encompassing, um, philosophy, let's see, uh, compromising. I'm just trying to think of, you know, the, the implementing, right? So you may know what those words mean, but so... If you can't find five words, you don't know what they mean, just pick five words that sort of jump out at you. Write those five words down and tell me what they mean. Here's the vision for TikTok. TikTok, this, this is their vision. TikTok is now available in over 150 markets and in 75 languages. It is a place where everyone belongs, regardless of nationality, ethnicity, gender, or socioeconomic levels and offers a vibrant, buzzing atmosphere that celebrates trends and embraces diversity. TikTok has become a marketplace for ideas around the globe, transcending boundaries to create a diverse hub of content, right? So a lot of this is, is falling under the, the umbrella of, of marketing and public relations, right? So this, this is when you're trying to communicate to the public and let the public know who you are and sort of like you know what you're all about and you know it's it's interesting right you're, you're providing information but you're also trying to persuade too right you're trying to convince people that this is what you're doing so i would uh i i'd be curious to, to see what other other people think you know what what's the what's the primary purpose for you know putting out a mission and vision statement or you know um, telling people your vision for the future these are Google's values. 
Uh, focus on the user. All else will follow. That's number one. Number two, it's best to do one thing really, really well. Fast is better than slow. Democracy on the web works. You don't need to be at your desk to need an answer. You can make money without doing evil. There's always more information out there. The need for information crosses all borders. You can be serious without a suit. And great just isn't good enough. So I like that. Um, the fact that they're numbered and ranked is, is, is very, is very uh, interesting. And you could probably read a lot into that, right? So number one, focus on the user and all else will follow. We could, we could, um, we could modify that to say focus on the reader. And all else will follow, right? I think that that that'd be good advice to you as a writer, right? So focus on the writer, and all else will follow. It's best to do one thing really, really well. I, I agree with that, right? It's, it's best to talk about one thing very, very well than to talk about many things in a very scattered and unorganized way. So those are Google's uh, values, right? Um, don't think we have time to go into assignment 34. We could maybe save that for um, tomorrow's class. But I'm hoping, you know, just just a quick recap here. You know, if we're going back to um, the goals for today's class, right? You know, you're you're, you're thinking about um, some important questions to 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 ask about any any piece of writing. You know. Um, You know, how was it written? You know, and this is where we talk about style and genre. You know, how was it written? Who wrote it? Why did they write it? So um, I guess, yeah, who wrote it? Why did they write it? Um, how was it written? Um, who did they write it for? Another great question, right? So um, uh, let's see one more. How was it organized? Right, so these are these are all very important questions that we that we ask about uh, a piece of writing. Um, you know, we try to break it down. What's its purpose? Why was it written? What's the audience? Who was it written for? Um, the subject? Well, I, I didn't even, I didn't even write. Yeah, what? What is it about? You know, what details are there? You know, what is it about and what details, um, you know, back this up? And if you can answer those questions uh, about a piece of writing, then you're well on your way to understanding what you've just read and talking about it um, in an intelligent way with other readers, with other writers, and entering into a conversation and maybe perhaps most immediately most important to you, you know, getting a good grade on your English assignments. Okay, so I think that's uh, a good point to wrap things up for today. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you for tomorrow's class. We'll, we'll start off with assignment 34.